In the election November 7th, there will be challenges to incumbents in two of Boston's city council districts. One of them is District 9, which covers Alston Brighton. In tonight's pre-election segment, we talk with the incumbent running for re-election, Mark Ciomo. Thank you very much for being with us, Councillor. Great to see you. I want to start with a, a job you've held for quite a while on the City Council, Chair of the Ways and Means Committee. Yes. Uh, it, it seems to be an important job, but uh, it's also uh, of interest for the district to say, well, what has that done for the district? Well, I, it, it actually puts me at the, at the table with, um, with the budget writers, um, you know, working with them not only during the budget season, but leading up to the budget season. And it's, been, uh, it's, it's given me the opportunity as someone who represents Alston Brighton to actually be at the table as they are developing the budget, but also once the, the budget is developed, to advocate on the part of uh, the residents across the city as well as my colleagues. Uh, you know, to tweak it and to, uh, you know, focus attention on areas that, you know, might come up during the process. Well, one area of concern in this district is, is safety on the streets, especially for people on bikes. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an increase in, in Vision Zero, so how, how much did you have to do with that? Well, I, I chaired that hearing. It was, it was quite emotional and moving, actually. And right after the hearing, uh, I got on the phone with the mayor and I said, you know, we have a great program, the Slow Streets program. Program, and that's what we were looking to enhance, and uh, that's what some of the advocates were asking for. So I had a quick discussion with the mayor. The mayor uh, took it from there and, and announced um, an additional million dollars for, for uh, towards Vision Zero, towards slow streets. But but having said that, is you know just because um, it's it's maybe labeled Vision Zero or slow streets, we're still doing a lot of other. Uh, infrastructure improvements that actually do the same thing for our, for our citizens, our pedestrians, our bikers, and our uh, vehicle um, motorists. Of course, another thing that would have passed this committee was the mayor's uh, proposal, I think, for an exemption on the property tax. This is basically giving more of a break to owner occupants. Correct. Explain how, how, how important that is. Well, it's very important, and it and it resulted. I, I sponsored the legislation, and and uh, what it did was almost five hundred dollars additional dollar for dollar tax credit off your tax bill, if you're an owner occupant. Um, we were uh, prior to that, we had a thirty percent uh, owner occupancy exemption. This bumped it up to thirty five percent at a time when the values across the city were escalating. You know pretty rapidly, you know, double-digit um, um, rises in values, which would have really put a lot of burden on the uh, owner-occupants and first-time homebuyers as well. And I'd like to throw my pitch at the legislature. I uh, also passed a home rule petition unanimously in uh, city council so that uh, first-time buyers especially, but anybody who uh, owns and occupies a property, Sometimes you have to wait 18 months to actually realize the exemption. My legislation would move that up to uh, as, as little as six months. So um, we're, we're waiting to work with the legislature on that. Well, another issue that I think must affect some properties in Austin Brighton is the growth of the market in short-term rentals. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see a need to, for the council to plunge in here and maybe try to regulate this in some way? I, I believe it's time. Uh, I, I would like to see more of a statewide uh, parameter and then within the city of Boston to work on, um, you know, how it impacts the city more. I think it's, it's you know, a one-size-fits-all might not work. However, you know, uh, you know we've had um, hearings on it, and, uh, you know, what we don't want, what we want to prevent is clearing out buildings and having um, landlords leave them open for these, you know, short-term turnovers in you know, creating some transiency and and taking much needed units off the uh, the rolls for regular tenancy. This is BNN News, and we're talking with Mark Siomo running for re-election as city councilor in District 9. Um, councilor, one area of controversy during your last term was about who gets to run the medical marijuana mm -hmm. dispensary on Harvard Street. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there were some groups in the community that backed one proposal. Yeah. You backed another. Uh, they were represented by somebody who used to work for you as a political consultant. So some people are saying, mm -hmm. hey, you know, why not go with the other uh, proposal? Well, it was clear to me from the start that the other competitor had low scores, had an inferior site, didn't have the support that he said he had. 
uh, with public safety officials. I worked very diligently for three years before the other, the Mayflower came in, um, kind of fighting that, that um, applicant off. He was constantly badgering me to support him. And I just, he just didn't have the, the uh, experience. He didn't have uh, the, the better location and he didn't have the support from the public safety community. So to me, it was clear that Mayflower had experience. We had a location that was on the Brookline border. It's a standalone building. It was a former bank. It has parking. Uh, and, you know, when I work with uh, especially something like a new industry, I talk to a lot of people, whether they're public safety, I talk to the substance abuse task force folks, and I try to get as much information. At the end of the day, I made the right decision. In fact, that same company was rejected by Back Bay as well. Another thing that you worked on uh, during your time on the council uh, the past term was to change, at least tweak the enrollment policy for the Boston Public mm -hmm. Schools a bit. Explain why this helped uh, families in District 9. Well, I think it gives families and parents especially predictability, at least more predictability than they had previously with the three zones. You could be, you could be from Alston Brighton and get uh, assigned to a school in East Boston, so you're on a bus for, a, you know, a long part of the day. So this gave preference to walk zone people. And what we're seeing already in its uh, first four years of the rollout is schools like the Baldwin School, the Mary Lyons School, the Gardner School in particular in my district, are, have gone from more or less a 50-50 um, local zip codes uh, to 85 and 90 percent. And I think that's better for the community. It's obviously better for parents who are trying to navigate, you know, maybe more than one child, more than one job. Uh, so I, I, I support it and I see that uh, I feel that it's really benefiting, uh, especially the Austin Brighton folks, because we're kind of out here geographically as well. Of course, there, there are some problems in the district with, with Brighton High, the achievement mm -hmm. that there's a step backwards over the past year. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor says a lot of the students are from immigrant families, so mm -hmm. that might be reflected too. But mm -hmm. what do you think the school needs to, to get back in the other direction? Well. Um, I've been working closely with the instructional superintendent that was assigned to turn around schools and we're trying to create partnerships and they're looking at communications and technology and um, they're working very hard to create those connections so that uh, students have career paths, number one. Number two, um, the enrollment went down significantly. However, we've been able to secure additional funds, well over millions of dollars, because it's a turnaround school, to actually um, address uh, the, you talked about the ELL students. O over half of the, the students at Brighton High are ELL students. So to try to address the language issue. Uh, and get their scores back up. And, uh, you know, I was there on the first day of school. Uh, we were there just uh, last week for another advisory council meeting. Uh, so there's a lot of great folks around the table trying to address all those issues to bring Brighton High back to a standard that we can all be proud of. Another thing you had some involvement in that would affect young people in the same age group is some of the improvements at the parks. Yes. Um, you know, the parks are, are everybody, everybody's space. So I've always put an emphasis on, on public space and public buildings and, uh, you know, again, being chairman of Ways and Means when you're at the table and, you know, you're able to ride around your neighborhood and see what needs attention, I can bring them to the table. And I'm really proud of the fact that we, we were able to um, uh, redirect $4 million from uh, a surplus in uh, last year's budget from uh, lack of uh, snow removal into the Smith's Playground. Uh, phase one and also uh, was able to match that with uh, over two million dollars from Harvard so we're gonna have a six million dollar phase one phase two renovation of Smith's Park uh, I think it's gonna be fabulous similarly in Cleveland Circle we had the redevelopment of the old cinema site and we had the developer who contributed over two hundred and fifty thousand for a, a, a master plan a study and to do some drainage issues and I've always also um, helpful in securing more funds to also 
renovate the field house for the for uh, Brighton High to practice down there and others in the general public, uh, and that's underway now as well. Uh, we have two new green spaces in the district since I've been district city council behind Honan Library. You have Ray Malone Park, you have Rena Park. It's together almost an acre of brand new green space. So, you know, we're trying to make sure that. You know, we have a lot of development going on, but we also want to make sure that, you know, the, the residents benefit, the, the general public benefits from those, those developments as well. Thank you very much for being with us. Chris, great to be with you. Austin Brighton City Councilor Mark Ciomo.